Welcome again, folks. My name is Seishu, and I am your host for this week's episode of TiffinCast. Today, I'm joined by Jane Schock, a photographer based in West Hartford, Connecticut. And Jane's a wedding photographer and a commercial photographer and successful at both. And I met with Jane at Inspire Photo Seminars, or Photo Retreats, as I believe it's called, uh, about, what, three, months, three weeks ago? Three, four yeah, weeks ago? Yeah, right about three weeks yeah. ago. Yeah, and, you know, your presentation there blew me away. Oh, thanks. I really, I, took, I was taking notes left and right. Can you tell us what you were talking about and perhaps go over just generally what it is that photographers should know about saving money, uh, planning for the future, and really being able to juggle both having a photo career and a life at home. Sure. Um, <laughs> All in five minutes. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> no, I can. So my talk was called, uh, it was about um, creating a financially sustainable, comfortable life with photography. Um, and I just tried to go through kind of the main steps that I personally had found worked for us. Um, it's myself and my husband in the business. He joined a few years ago full time. So we are totally supporting a family of four on photography now. Um, and I feel like it took a lot of trial and error to get there. Um, so that's really what I wanted to share with my talk and really talk about real numbers and the reality of the photography business. Um, so a couple of the key points that I made was one, I do feel like you have to, um, I'm a believer in diversifying, um, and take weddings for instance. I think it's a very seasonal business and, um, while some photographers are successful at getting 40, 50 weddings a year and they're going year round, I don't think that's the case for the, the majority of photographers. So I found that we were shooting and making a lot of money during the months of May and October, which is the season here in New England, and then trying to make that money last what over the winter while we did things like update our website, do our taxes, do a lot of more administrative and marketing things. And pretty quickly I realized we need to be doing money-making activities um, in the off-season, too. And that's kind of where portraits came in because the family portrait business is really the biggest part is October through Christmas time or, or the holiday season for cards. Um, and then commercial work I've always enjoyed and I've been passionate about it and after my children got a little bit older, I started pursuing that again, and I found that's very, not very seasonal, but it's really a September through May kind of thing. There's not a lot for us anyway going on in the summer. So to me, that's one way to diversify that I could really segment out what I was doing and I we could do money making activities. And I was certainly can make enough you know, from one commercial job or a couple portraits to outsource my taxes, my bookkeeping, and now get help from marketing help and get programming help for the website. So I'm not like creating websites from scratch and stuff like I kind of was. <laughs> so that's kind of one area. Do you want me to keep going? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. You don't have to, um, you, you know, Jane, I, don't, I, I want to make sure that you, you don't, don't feel obligated to go through every point you you yeah. talked about because it was it was a an hour and a half long conversation that you were having with us. Yeah, uh, the room was packed. I think I'm. I I tell you, I, I've heard from other photographers who were also taking notes, and I think the I think the takeaway from that discussion was you got a plan. You got a yes. plan well in advance, uh, and really approach this as a business and I think it's not that I haven't approached it as a business but I you you opened my mind to things that I had not even considered you know That's like this great. like the, like the fact about when things happen weddings in this season portraits in this season 
commercial activities, headshots, whatever, and the other season. And, you know, that kind of sort of systematic approach, I think, is missing in a lot of photographers' lives because we yeah. just like taking pictures. Totally, yeah. And right? to me, I'm very uncomfortable with that whole just hoping it's all going to work out. So when I plan, like, it gives me, like, a calm and I think it that can help a lot of photographers, like just breaking it down and running the numbers, like even at a, a macro level. Like I was, I know we were talked about in the talk, but just going like, oh, I got you know, you know, twenty weddings at five thousand dollars each. What does that mean? That can I support myself on that? And or do I need eight thousand? Or do I need thirty weddings? Mm -hmm. And I think when people hear budgets a lot and think of spreadsheets and all that it's overwhelming for people who aren't trained in business mm -hmm. but if you keep it at just that kind of common sense kind of top level you actually can run your numbers all the time and I'm always running them you know I'm always trying to figure out where are we and what would this mean to us mm -hmm. if we did this kind of thing right so you're essentially uh, <laughs> forecasting and uh, trying to figure out scenarios where once you know for instance you were talking about you gave three scenarios i believe uh mm -hmm. during a talk where i you know a photographer says i'm going to be able to do uh you know 20 weddings at two thousand dollars or five thousand dollars and they don't take into account all the other things that sort of take away from that five thousand dollars and right. at, the, at the end of the day at the end of the year you really are not making hundred thousand dollars yeah, and I hear like so many people like talking like if they make a hundred thousand in sales that they're keeping that and they're not keeping it at all. Right. And um, hopefully they didn't spend like they were like that was their income. Um, but yeah, I think that's really crucial to do. And then you have to. Do, we didn't even have time to get into it, but there's the whole other side of really on the expenses doing the same kind of thing. Well, I, you know, one of the things I think that left me uh, wondering about what I should do next after I spoke, after your, you spoke to us, is is there a certain methodology that you you you'd, you'd say you got to follow to get started? I mean, there are I photographers think, who are starting. Yes. The photographers yeah. who are starting. There are photographers who are already doing this for a number of years and probably have some sort of a an idea as to what their their numbers are like, uh, and then there right. are folks who are really good at it. You know, so there's you know variations yeah. on who is a photographer and where they are in their in their journey as a photographer. Uh, and when I say photographer, I'm not just taking I'm not just meaning somebody who's taking pictures for a living, but somebody who's making it as a business as well. So, right. Uh, and it's hardest at the beginning because you don't really know what you can do and you right. don't know what things cost. Right. Um, so I think like a rule of thumb can be that you're going to, of whatever you make, you'll probably keep 40 to 60% of it. But if you're not making very much money, it's going to cost twenty or $30,000 a year to run your business. Like, you know, just traditionally, if you're not, you know, doing some other job. Right. Um, so that's maybe some starting helpful numbers for people to start. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I just look at it as a year, like just the yearly planning and just get a top level down. That's what I did when I started. I said, well, how many weddings do you think I can get this first year? And how many portraits could I get in uh, how many commercial jobs could I get? And and then, like we did talk about in the in the presentation, that there are some things that you actually can control. Like you can set up a day and promote it and have people come in and do headshots, LinkedIn shots, family portraits, stuff like that. And then there's some things you can't control, like getting a wedding is really hard to control unless you're really good at trade shows to me. There's a place you can go and sometimes book quickly after if you're good at that. Um, but you have to kind of just make a stab and see how it goes and adjust all the time, you know, based on what's really happening. And then I think the photographer that's been in business for a little while, 
they have the benefit of history and they're starting to see what does or doesn't work. But to just get that down on paper, um, I, you know, I've met a lot of photographers that are, don't want to know their numbers. They're afraid to look at it. And so to, it actually can be like, it can take it out of the emotional world and put it into a, Hey, this is black and white. And you know, nothing is the end of the world here. Um, so if I see what's really happening, then I can make adjustments where I need to. So I think that is the first step, is to try to write down a plan for one year. That's terrific. Um, you started a new website called Photo Career mm -hmm. uh, for photographers. Uh, what is it about? Who is it for? And what are you trying to do with the website? What is, it, what is your end yeah. goal with, for Photo Career? Um, so the, the crux of the, the website is personal experience. And I feel like I am somebody who tries a lot of stuff. So I go to portfolio reviews in New York and I pay money to, to do them. And I never see any, I don't see many reviews online of what did you really get out of this? How much did, you, did it cost? What did you invest in? Did you get a job from it? Like, that's what I want to know. Do you get a did you get a job from being on Find a Photographer, ASMP? Did you get a job from being on Style Me Pretty? Mm -hmm. um, so I want to share more of that because I feel it's not out there. But it is, in essence, it is the story of uh, our business's career or our career um, and what's worked and what hasn't. And it, it does cover weddings, portraits, and commercial work. And we are kind of unique in that. I feel like most people are specializing. Um, but just kind of laying that out for people and so they can see how it works. Mm -hmm. And then also I have a business background. Um, so just sharing some of the things that I share, like with friends all the time, just that are helpful. Um, but I also set it up. Um, as an experiment for me, because my, to me, my next step after I keep growing, you know, the photography side is I'm still just one person and I can only make money right now when I photograph and there's only me there. Um, so there's a lot of ways people leverage that when they're in the photography career. A lot of people, you know, get associates is one way. Um, and we've certainly looked at that and feel like that's not really for us. Um, so the way I want to leverage is teaching over the internet. Um, so I feel like this first year though of photo career is really to get a lot of content out mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and then maybe figure out how can I make this into an, an income stream for me either through um, you know, an ebook or using ad words or just exploring that kind of stuff that I would never feel would be appropriate to put on my like wedding website Absolutely. kind of stuff. Absolutely. So that's kind of a little experiment for me too. And I'll be blogging about that and what works and what doesn't work too. Excellent. Cause I think, you know, we think a lot about, do we need to be, you know, another off season seasonal thing you can do is do teach and do workshops in the in the off season we're all certainly capable of shoot teaching a basic you know photography 101 class right now and and hopefully i can in the future teach some business stuff wonderful um one of the other things you do of course is uh we talked about your weddings and your corporate work your, your commercial work mm -hmm. um how did you get into the commercial work uh, in terms of finding clients or in terms of just even, say, launching to the commercial side of things? Yeah, it, you know, I'd always been dabbling in it because when I, I my uh, photography is a second career. So when I got out, I was nine years in the corporate world. And when I discovered photography, I went back to school at night for two years. And I had the opportunity to just, after that, go all right, I don't even know what part of photography I'm interested in. So I'm going to try a little bit of everything. So, you know, besides weddings and family portraits, <coughs> I was a stringer for the Associated Press and I shot the Cummins engine was my like first commercial job. And then I worked for a magazine. 
And so I had all those experiences and I started, so I was always investigating how to market in those worlds. But once I had kids and I moved to the, um, to Connecticut, I thought I kind of put the whole commercial stuff on hold because I just felt like weddings and portraits were so much more flexible mm -hmm. schedule wise. Mm -hmm. Um, so really, we just started, I've always had a commercial website up, and we did have a huge break like five years ago now that, um, you, you, this is a story of you never know where PR will lead you, but um, we won a contest for the Wedding Photojournalists Association, and they sent a press release out to any um, newspaper we wanted. So we just did our local, West Hartford Life, <coughs> plus a few more, and they ran a big feature on us, a couple pages. And a mom saw that, sent it to her daughter in New York, and the daughter happened to be the supervising producer for Sportsnet New York, saw something in a wedding photo she wanted to do with the New York Mets, and that called us and hired us for that job. And that was our first, like, really big commercial break. That's fantastic. So that's really helped give future clients um, – a comfort zone of like we hey we shoot the Mets we can probably shoot you too so but as far as getting all that commercial business the two we really have two basic ways that we get it <clears throat> I probably get three to four jobs a year from being on find a photographer with the, on the ASMP mm -hmm. the American Society of Media Photographers site <clears throat> and most both of our we've done two magazine covers both of those came through ASMP because I think a lot of buyers are searching for local um, photographers um, especially in the editorial world mm -hmm. um, and then the second way we get business um, is cold calling and um, like we cold called I guess it was like a slightly warm call we got a job through ASMP to photograph the chief marketing officer of Xerox for a magazine. Mm -hmm. So we photographed her for the magazine. They reached out to us to say, could we buy that shot? Um, so there was kind of a little bit of a dialogue there. And then we kind of, that was probably six months ago. And then a month and a half ago, we went back to her, the chief marketing officer and said, hey, you know, is there anyone we could show our portfolio to in your marketing group? Because we, we shoot for GE Energy, you know, mm -hmm. I'm always kind of dropping names. Sure. Um, and we'd love to sh have an opportunity to shoot for you guys. And that she's like, well, you know, I don't know about a meeting, but I'll pass your info on. And two weeks later, they called. And now next Tuesday, we're shooting all their executives Excellent. at Xerox headquarters. So it's just, it really is reaching out, trying to make connections. We cold called an, an ad agency in, in New York that ended up hiring us to do a L'Oreal advertorial and then shoot New York Fashion Week for L'Oreal. So it's, you know, yesterday we met, we went into New York and we met with Getty um, just to talk to see if there was any mutual thing but it real I really just looked at the website found the email and emailed and sent a link to um fashion week that we had just shot because this division shoots that kind of stuff oh. <clears throat> and our website but that said we also do every two months we send an email we're on ad base which is now agency access which right. is a big list of all the people that buy photos um at magazines corporate um, ad agencies. So every two months we take that list and we send an email blast out. And then we have kind of a group. We, now we've narrowed it down to about 150 people that either we've worked with or we really want to work with, or we've met at portfolio reviews. Um, and those people we send a postcard to every two months. And then whenever we go into New York, we try to make calls to see if we can set up a personal meeting but it's kind of rare to get a personal meeting like yeah one day I just sat and called like 10 people and everybody said no or wasn't there or something so it, it's a lot of rejection <laughs> but you just keep going and and realize they're really busy and keep trying sure
And I think a lot of person, from what I hear, perseverance will win the race in that commercial world for the Nash, the national level clients. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, congratulations on the Xerox. Uh, Thanks. Uh, of pictures, I mean the executive pictures. That's fantastic. Um, I, I want to know, do you have separate blogs for each of your websites? We do. We usually keep photo, photojane.com and photo iris, commercial and wedding, two totally separate websites. They both have built-in blogs, totally separate. And they have very different blog voices, actually. Like Mike writes the photo iris blog. Oh, I see. Um, and we're mainly, we're mainly blogging customer shoots and then obviously anything that's wedding or portrait related. And if we have kind of a high profile or an interesting um, commercial shoot, we'll blog that there. But commercial, I blog and I probably do it like once a month. And it's, it's just not as big a focus for us. I, I feel like brides are going to that wedding blog and I feel like Art buyers are really, they're busy. They're not following my blog. They're, right. Maybe they're checking it out for new, new work if I send them a link to please check out my work. So Excellent. it has different tones. And I think I, 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 it's rare that I will tell a commercial client that, hey, I'm a wedding photographer because it's just connoting a whole different type of lighting and, and job and work style and everything. Gotcha. So. But I do go the other way, and I actually get jobs sometimes, commercial jobs from um, wedding clients that maybe, you know, they need to recommend a photographer at their work. So Excellent. I want them to know that I do commercial work. Wonderful. Wonderful. Jane, thank you so much for the conversation. Um, yep. It's been it's been great. Um, I'd love for... Uh, if it's okay with you, uh, to be able to share the 10 points I think you went over at your at your talk on the on the blog post that will accompany this video. I think it might it might just whet people's appetite for learning even more from you. And of course, I'll have the links to Photo Career, Photo Iris, uh, and Photo Jane uh, in the post as well. So. But I want to thank you for making the time. I know Thanks, we had some you. technical problems initially, but we worked through them. Wow. Um, but it's been great. So thank you so much. Thank you, Seishu. Take care. Thank you.